So we're here today uh, to announce the Green Party of Manitoba platform. This is something that our policy team has been working on for quite some time, well over a year. It's something that we're very proud of. We're offering the people of Manitoba bold ideas in this election. And it's what Manitobans need. We want to eradicate poverty. We want to create a prosperous, green economy and protect the environment at the same time. Because only the Greens understand that the economy depends on the environment. But the Greens also understand that, Manitoba, that the economy in Manitoba must work for all Manitobans. So this platform builds on some announcements we've already made, like our guaranteed annual income proposal, a proposal that would nearly cut poverty rates in Manitoba in half. No other party is offering a proposal this comprehensive that would make such a marked difference in the lives of those who are both receiving employment and income assistance, who would see an increase in their amounts, as, as well as the amounts of other lower income families, sometimes referred to as the working poor. This is something that's fundamentally important because Greens understand not only do we have to care for the planet, but we have to care for each other. Another issue that Greens fundamentally recognize needs to be fixed is the crisis in our child and family services. We have far too many kids in care. And I just, while I'm sitting here, I want to acknowledge some of my candidates as I go throughout. Here's Patrick Wood, who's our candidate in the PAW, who works in child and family services in Cross Lake, and I'm sure could tell you much about what is wrong with the system. We have, according to the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, the highest apprehension rate of children in the world. I repeat that, the highest apprehension rate in the world. And quite frankly, far too many of them, in fact, the majority of them, are Indigenous. This is something that's shameful and that Manitobans needs to be addressed. So what should we do? Firstly, we have to start giving families more support. We have to change the model so that there's not a financial incentive towards apprehension. We need to support families first. We also need to make sure we support the social workers out there. We need to make sure that the case workers have a caseload of no more than 20 files. That's going to enable them to work with families to keep families together. Beyond that, we also need to make sure we increase supports for children until the age of 25. In addition to caring for children, we know that there's a need for a universal daycare system in Manitoba. I'm at the doorsteps. I'm sure when my Wolseley candidate, Dave Nickers, is at the doorsteps, he's hearing the same thing. Our Fort uh, White candidate, Curly, I'm sure, has, could tell you all about the need for daycare. Um, this is something we're constantly hearing from Manitobans, and something we've been calling for since 2009. And it's something that the government, right before the eve of election, said they would do. Now, this is good. This shows the Greens push ideas forward. But quite frankly, we have to ask ourselves, can we trust them to implement that, this? Was this just an election tactic, or was this a sincere commitment to creating the childcare spaces that we all need? We know that creating childcare is good for the economy. Greens would target single parents in particular first. Why? Because if we can get them working, the costs of daycare can often make it difficult for them to work. They will be contributing more to the economy. By working, they will be paying more into taxes. Therefore, there will be some cost recovery from simply implementing daycare. We know that we need to fund the promotion of healthful living. We don't put enough money into preventative health. Only 0.4% of the healthcare budget is being spent on preventative health. We want to increase that to 2%, and part of how we're going to do that is going to be following the lead of Mexico, and Britain is recently discussing it, and other countries that have implemented what's known as a junk food tax. The idea being we have to put a charge on unhealthy foods and use that money to fund preventative health measures. There's a number of measures we could help. We could apply that to the atrociously high cost of ambulance services. We could create more local food initiatives up north and across Manitoba. We could invest in, in uh, better care for, for a number of chronic diseases. This is in terms of upfront care, such as diabetes, heart disease, etc. And of course, transitioning to a carbon-free economy has to be the objective of every government right now. But quite frankly, it's not. We hear more hot air from this, from this present government that's looking to be re-elected than sincere action. Only the Greens are putting forward a plan that would put forward $166 million to deal with addressing greenhouse gas emissions and protecting our waterways. Only the Greens are putting forward this sincere of a commitment. $166 million per year. Compare that to the $1 million a year the NDP wants to offer and the $2 million a year the Liberals want to offer and the PCs, well, they're always silent on climate change, aren't they? 
What the Greens are looking to do, in addition to funding green initiatives, is reducing payroll taxes by $60 million. That's not going to totally eliminate payroll taxes, but it will significantly reduce them. Once again, other parties promise to scrap them, but they don't tell you where the money is going to come from. We're also looking to reduce the lowest personal income tax bracket by $274 million. The reason for that is, how are we going to fund this? I'm making a half a billion dollars of promises, right? How am I going to fund it? It's going to be funded through the revenues from a carbon tax. And we've already outlined that before, but what I want to highlight is, that's going to create a ton of jobs. We better insulate people's houses. We put rooftop solar on people's houses. We get more electric vehicles out there. Uh, we invest in mass transit. All of those things create jobs, and all of those are needed investments that we need, not right now, we needed them 10 years ago, and our government has failed us in implementing them. Greens believe in, a, in a support for small and local businesses. We are the party for the small entrepreneurs. We are the party uh, for localized production. We understand it. Many of our candidates, such as Dave Nickers and Woolsey, are themselves small business owners. What I want to highlight is one of our other reforms in terms of reforming education taxes, getting education taxes off of property and onto income. What does that mean for a small business owner? Yes, in terms of the double levy that they pay on education taxes, both the commercial levy and the ordinary levy, for some businesses that's going to mean an increase in corporate tax rates. We can't make money come from nowhere. Once again, unlike the other parties, we're being honest. We're showing you what sacred cows we're going to slaughter to get done what needs to be done in Manitoba. What, what I want to highlight though is, if you're a restaurateur and you're starting up your business, it doesn't matter if you're making a cent of profit, you have to pay your education property taxes up front. In contrast, if it was paid through corporate taxes, you're paying it when you're profitable. It's much more on ability to pay. So that, I think, has a huge impact for businesses. I think if you look at our, our carbon tax, it itself is going to help businesses. $166 million of investment in the economy is going to move our economy forward towards what we need. What do we need? We need more localized food production. We need to change our agricultural system. Orga the organic food industry is the fastest growing segment of the food industry in, in the world, actually. And we need to get ahead of it. We need to make Manitoba a leader of that. We need to work with our farmers, and we need to help them transition away from industrial ag towards organic, localized ag production. That's going to also, not only is that going to be better for our farmers, better for our rural communities, it's also going to be better for Manitobans in general. Because there are studies that show we have maybe two weeks of food supply under our current food system. We've seen how vulnerable our current food system is on exports with the rise in the Ameri or, sorry, with the fall in the Canadian dollar and the corresponding rise in the American dollar. If we produce locally, we're more resilient we're actually a stronger economy. And of course, we want to focus on transportation. Transportation is the largest leading sector of greenhouse gas emissions in Manitoba. So what are Greens going to do? Let's make, let's make mass transit free. Sounds like a crazy idea, but it's not. It wouldn't cost a significant amount of money, maybe 60 to 70 million to do it in Winnipeg, maybe another 10 or 15 or 20 million to do it in other smaller communities around Manitoba should they be willing to come forward and work with the Green government. But what's that going to do? Once again, at present, transit fares are PST exempt. People are going to go out and spend that money elsewhere in the economy, they're going to recoup it with a higher PST revenue. They're also going to likely go spend that at local businesses, creating a higher velocity of money into the economy. These are the types of bold ideas that only Greens are putting forward. These are the types of ideas that only Greens are willing to push for. Sure, other parties from time to time have pick up our ideas, but do you want the imitators or do you want the originators in the legislature? I would say we want the originators, and the originators stand behind me. All of the members of the Green Party of Manitoba, and I want to acknowledge that there's a lot of people, our policy team, our people assisting us that deserve a lot of credit, but I'm just going to highlight the candidates once again. Kelly Willanans running in St. Patel. Dave Nickers uh, running here in Wolseley, and Dave Nickers, uh, he might even have a better shot than me at becoming the next, uh, the first MLA in uh, Manitoba history, but we're hoping for two, that way we can push forward a ton of private members' bills, and I think there's even many more of our 30-plus candidates that I think can push forward 
Uh, Carly Ann Runyon's is running in Fort White. I think she's going to give Mr. Pallister a run for his money. And Patrick Wood up in the paw, I think, would be a great representative, would be a great representative for the people up north. And I think, should you want to ask any questions about child and family services, I'd ask you to ask him about some of his personal experiences. I'm sure he could tell you a lot, not only about child and family services, but what has been going on in his life in terms of where he lives in the community of Cross Lake. So I really appreciate everyone coming here. I'm going to ha happy to answer any questions, but I want to point out that the Green Party of Manitoba platform, I would say, is the best platform being put forward by any party. We've done our homework, we put the research together, and we ask Manitobans to go to our website, www.greenparty.mb.ca uh, slash platform, and get a copy of the platform. Thank you. Got a hypothetical, if I may. Uh, in the event that uh, the Green Party should form a balance of power in a minority government, what top three concessions would your party be insisting on in exchange for uh, support for a minority government? Okay. Um, well, I mean, I think what it's going to be is a matter of any situation like that. I don't know that I would just necessarily want to go straight to a coalition approach. I think I might be looking to look, work on an issue-by-issue -issue basis with any of those politicians, but certainly key things for Greens, we need to put a price on carbon. That absolutely has to be done. We need to look at proportional representation. That absolutely has to be done. Because if we don't fix the way that we elect people in our electoral system, then we're never going to see a better government, quite frankly. I certainly hope a few Greens will make a difference, but I think systematic and a broad proportional representation reform and consultation with the people of Manitoba is key. Uh, beyond that, I think we'd also look at other aspects, some green infrastructure investment that we need. I think some of those would be key protection for Lake Winnipeg, support for rural and northern people in terms of local food production. I think we could find a lot of issues where we could work with other parties. I think Greens are much more solutions and policy focused than other parties and I think that's an advantage and I hope the people of Manitoba will see that advantage if they take spend some time on our website www.greenparty.mb.ca. What's the number one thing James that sets and you've listed a, a lot of them but in a nutshell that sets the Green Party apart from the other three parties, is particularly in your platform. A focus on real solutions, not just rhetoric. That's really what it comes down to. We don't necessarily come at things from some ideological lens or we don't dig ourselves in on a partisan basis. We actually try to get to the root of it. We actually try to look at the numbers. As I said, you know, Brian Pallister's got this great plan to find a half a billion dollars through this global audit review, seems like it seems like a scheme for him to hire his friends to review government and to find cost savings. I don't think he's going to find us half a billion. We know that if we're going to deliver our promises, we have to show where their numbers come from. We've shown our sacred cows. We've shown that we've shown which sacred cows we're going to slaughter to make Manitoba a better green economy. What would you say to voters who maybe, because some voters have sort of pigeonholed the Green Party as the environmental party, right? I mean, what would you say? If you were talking to a voter right now, hey, I bet you wouldn't know these are a couple of the things that we have ideas to do that you maybe wouldn't think about. Well, the Green Party does come from an environmental focus, but as I said, it's a recognition that the environment and the economy aren't separate. And so, and, and fundamentally, that this planet's only so big and we can't continue living the way we are, particularly here in North America and Western Europe. So I think that's the fundamental aspect, but I think if people take a look at us, they take a look at our fiscal prudence and our, our focus on moving towards balanced budgets, as I said, actually showing the numbers. If they saw our education property tax reform proposal, which has been called for the Manitoba Chamber of Commerce, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, I mean, I think they'd be quite surprised. I think Manitobans need to give us more of a read. I think we're a party that can be many things to all people, and that's what we fundamentally need in Manitoba. The platform mentions a guaranteed income. Yep. Can you explain again how it works? Sure. The guaranteed annual income, uh, we're going to remove a number of existing tax credits and in favor of a single refundable benefit. So for a single individual, it would start at about $6,300 and they would receive a benefit until about $40,000. The way that it works is as you start earning income, it would be your guaranteed annual income benefit would be reduced at a rate of 16%. So that in itself is going to cut poverty rates in half. For different family sizes, there are different numbers. I would encourage you to take a look at the tables in the back. But at the end of the day, what it means is a 22% increase in disposable income for those living below the low income cutoff line in exchange for about a 1% increase in disposable income of higher income earners. We think that that's a worthwhile investment. And the reason being, when we looked at the previous Mincom experiment that was done in Dauphin, we saw increasing graduation rates, a higher propensity for people to go out and work, uh, about 8.5% reduction in hospital visits. 
uh, what we're going to see is long-term savings for the justice, for the healthcare system, for you know, a number of social services. That's going to give us long-term savings that's going to enable us to get back to balanced budgets and it's going to enable us to invest in other uh, initiatives that we know that are needed. Um, some of our bigger promises like pushing out childcare or pushing out uh, mental health into Medicare. We know those are going to take time uh, to implement. But if we start investing now in strategic investments like this, when we realize the long-term savings, that's going to give us more maneuverability in terms of implementing the needed solutions that Manitobans know we need. Could you just talk a little bit about how you, you intend to uh, address the mounting costs of health care? Well, one of the things that, as we said, is we're, we're in favor of what would colloquially be known as a junk food tax. Uh, looking at unhealthy food, uh, particularly trying to look at uh, foods that aren't PST exempt, uh, and trying to implement a surcharge on those and use that money and put it into health care and particularly put it into health care in a preventative manner so that we can find some long-term savings. I mean, uh, obviously, I guess the second point I should address, obviously with demographics, there's going to be some increase in health care costs. But once again, this puts us in a position to start moving now, to start having the funding there so we can deal with that. I don't hear any other party, you know, they all address the demographic aspect is there, but they don't have a plan of where the money is going to come from. And I think that's fundamentally different than what we're presenting. Do you have any timelines with regard to how to go about moving and complete, completing a transition to the carbon free uh, economy? Um, in terms of timelines, I think what we need to do is we need to implement solutions and track them and then go back and monitor. I think that's what we've seen from this government is continuous, okay, we'll do this in 10 years, or we'll do this in 20 years, we'll do this in 30 years. What we have, what we have done is we've modeled the increase of the price of fuel would lead to about a 5% reduction in transportation-related demand of those fuels. Uh, so that in itself, I think, would be about 128,000 uh, kilotons reduction. Not saying that it's everything, but that's an instant reduction. Then once we put that 166 million into smart greenhouse gas reductions, there are ways to run economic models. I've spoken with members inside the civil service. The province has actually run these models in terms of the most efficient models, but they haven't implemented them. So that in itself will give us a further reduction of greenhouse gases. It's going to be a constant tracking of, of those greenhouse gas reductions. I would also say something that Manitoba can do that's not maybe so much here at home, but it can stop energy east stop it right now because that in itself is about 150 percent of the emissions of Manitoba produces each year moving through that pipe. Yeah. Well, Dave, no, Dave has been long commenting on, no go ahead Dave, say a word or two. Yeah, we are the only, only party with a policy against Energy East. That's all I have to say. We, you know, if you're thinking about voting for the environment, if you care about our water supply and about real action on climate change and not just words, we're the only party with a policy against the Energy East pipeline.